In this video, you'll see how to accelerate ETL or extract, transfer, and load processes for Amazon Redshift with AWS Glue. With this serverless solution, you can reduce costs by avoiding third-party ETL fees, increase data integration efficiency, and simplify common data loading operations into Redshift. AWS Glue is a serverless data integration service that makes it easier to discover, prepare, move, and integrate data from multiple sources for analytics, machine learning, or ML, and application development. Amazon Redshift is a fully managed petabyte-scale data warehouse service in the cloud that uses SQL to analyze structured and semi-structured data across data warehouses, operational databases, and data lakes. Together, these AWS native services offer a modern data architecture that's easy to manage and offers performance at scale in seconds. In this video, we'll look at two scenarios. In the first scenario, we want to update customer data stored in Amazon Redshift based on daily account transactions stored in Apache Iceberg tables on Amazon S3. We'll use Glue Studio to build an end-to-end -end job that will extract the Amazon S3 data join it with the Amazon Redshift tables, aggregate and join transactions, and merge the updated records back to Amazon Redshift. We'll then use Amazon QuickSight to help analyze the results by ranking customers based on total daily transactions. Let's get started. We'll begin in AWS Glue Studio, where we'll open the visual ETL interface and create a new job starting with a blank canvas. First, we'll give the job a name. Next, we'll add an S3 data source node. Next, we'll configure the S3 data source properties. Let's use AWS Glue's data catalog to select the database and tables we want to work with. Based on our selection, the format is automatically set to Apache Iceberg. Now that our data source is configured, let's add the aggregate transform to our job so we can compute aggregated values for fields in our data set. We can select the fields we want to group rows by. Next, we'll select the fields and functions to aggregate. We can select from a number of built-in functions. To make our data easier to work with, let's rename the field we just created. Now that the iceberg source data from S3 is prepped, we want to join that data with our Redshift tables. To do so, the first step is to add Redshift as a source. We can choose to access our Redshift data through a direct data connection or through AWS Glue data catalog tables. We'll use the direct data connection and select our data from the dropdown. Now we'll choose how we'd like to access the data. The single table option allows us to select a single schema and a single table from our Redshift data. The custom query option allows us to define a custom data set using SQL from multiple Redshift tables found in one or more schemas. We'll leave the single table option selected. Next, we'll select the schema and table we want to work with. Let's join our data sources. The join transform requires two parent nodes. Next, we'll add a join condition. We'll select a field from each parent node. The tables are now joined. Next, let's add two derived columns so we can structure our data to show the last day's transactions and total valuation. For our first derived column, we'll use a simple SQL statement to update the total valuation column with the last day's data. Let's add the second derived column. In this case, we'll create a new column that contains the last day's transaction flow plus the total valuation. 
Next, let's add a transform that allows us to select which fields to work with in our dataset. We'll select the stock symbol field from our Redshift data and the two fields that we just created. Now that our data is prepped, let's write it back to Amazon Redshift. To do so, we'll first add a Redshift target node. Next, we'll configure the target node properties. As we did earlier with the Redshift source node, we'll access our data using a direct data connection. We'll select the same schema that we used in our source node. Now we'll select our destination table. Let's see what we can do with the data in our table. The Glue Studio Visual Editor offers out-of-the-box options that help simplify common data loading operations into Amazon Redshift. We'll select Merge. This selection provides two choices. We can specify matching keys and choose what happens to rows that match or don't match the key. Or we can enter a custom merge statement. Let's look at that option. For our purposes, we'll select the simple option, which allows us to enter conditions without writing any special code. First, we'll select the field to use as a matching key. Next, we'll specify the actions to perform when records match or do not match between the source and target. In this case, we'll leave the default actions selected. Finally, we'll select the IAM role that can write to the Amazon S3 staging directory. Next, we'll go to Job Details. Here, we'll also select an IAM role as well as a glue version. Let's save and run our job. Next, let's switch to QuickSight and look at an analysis built from the data we just gathered. QuickSight is a fast, cloud-powered business intelligence service that delivers insights to the people in your organization. You can easily create and publish interactive dashboards like this one. The fields list on the left shows the schema we created in AWS Glue Studio. The chart shows a list of company funds ranked by valuation as of the last day's transaction flow. We can drill down to see the last day's transactions for each company. This scenario illustrated how easy it is to get started with ETL for Redshift by directly browsing Redshift schemas and tables from the Glue Studio interface. In the second scenario, we'll use some advanced transformations and built-in pattern detection in AWS Glue to update and enrich our data. Specifically, we'll use bank account details to enrich customer profiles and deepen our analysis, while filtering out personally identifiable information or PII. Let's get started. This time, we'll look at a job that has already been created. This job uses the same data sources as the previous job, but includes updates and additional elements that will help us extract the information we need. Our data source node is connected to the same Amazon S3 data source. A detect sensitive data node has been added for this scenario. This transform has two data scanning options. You can find sensitive data in each row by scanning the entire data set or find columns that represent sensitive information by scanning a sample. In this case, we'll look for sensitive data in each row. We can also define the types of sensitive information to detect. In this case, we're selecting specific patterns to detect. We can choose from a number of out-of-the-box patterns. For this job, we'll look for bank account patterns in two geographic regions. Finally, we'll choose actions to take on detected entities. We're going to enrich our data with the results. Let's look at the next node. This transform extracts a new column from the PII detection results. We've connected the same Redshift data source that we used in the previous scenario with the same schema and table. Next, let's look at the join transform. The join is configured as before, but this time we've selected our PII column extraction as the second parent node. In the aggregate transform, we've chosen two new fields to group by. 
In the rename field transform, a field was renamed to help keep our data clean. The pivot transform will help restructure our data for aggregation by converting rows into columns, allowing us to extract data by regions. This information will be written to our Redshift data target. Let's take a look. As before, we're using a direct data connection to access Redshift data. We're using the same schema but have selected a new table to work with. Again, we're using the merge function. Let's quickly review the remaining details. Now we'll save and run this new job. Let's take a look at the new QuickSight analysis. As before, our data is ranked by last day's transaction flow. This time, we can drill down to see how the transaction flow is broken down by region. You've just seen how to accelerate ETL processes for Amazon Redshift with AWS Glue. You can learn more about this topic in the description and links for this video. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.